Welcome to episode 164 of Explode Your Expert Business Show, brought to you by gtex.org.uk. I'm your host, Simone Vincenzi, the expert strategist, and this is the podcast for experts who want to become the ultimate authority in their niche while making an impact in the world. And today is a very special episode because uh, I'm going to do for a few weeks a, a special series on selling from the stage where I review the pitches of some of our GTEx members, in particular our lifetime members. And today I have the pleasure to review the pitch of our lifetime member Delis Silla. Delis is the founder of a charity called Who Will Hear My Cry? And it's a charity that raises awareness of rape, child abuse, and domestic violence in England and Ghana. On top of that, she's also a best-selling author of a great book around relationship. And she helps women finding the man of their dreams and other nightmares. And in this live coaching session, we talk about how to structure an event to optimize sales, how to use the application close effectively, to maximize conversion. And you can read the interview transcript if you prefer reading and get all the bonus resources on our website, which is www.gtex.org.uk forward slash 164. There you can also find the details to connect with the awesome Dillis. She is absolutely incredible. And uh, if you want to become a GTEx member and uh, have me review your pitches and see how we can help you become the ultimate authority in your niche, then uh, click below. There is a link in the show notes where you can book a call with our team and uh, we can see how we can get you started straight away. And uh, as well, uh, we have a resource for you, which is our incredible ultimate selling from the state checklist which is uh, the checklist uh, that I've created to help you out and to help myself out to create a pitch that sells but without using manipulative and sleazy techniques. And uh, as well, if you're feeling, you know, a bit uh, overwhelmed and uh, you're working by yourself a lot and you want to connect with like-minded people, why don't you join our Facebook group where you can connect with our members, with all the guests that we had in the past episodes and as well get bonus trainings like the one that I did uh, for on how to get featured into Forbes or the one that I'm going to do soon on uh, how to get um, uh, corporate speaking gigs. You will absolutely love it. If you haven't subscribed yet, then subscribe to our podcast right now straight away. And without further ado, it's time to hear this uh, special episode and I'm sure you will find a lot of golden nuggets to apply for your next event whether it's a seminar or a webinar, but in particular seminars or uh, an external talk. I'll see you on the other side. Ciao. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Welcome to another special episode of Explode Your Expert Business Show. Today I'm here with the one and only our gorgeous uh, Dilly (laughs) Silla. How you doing? (laughs) Well, you are. You are. Even if you don't feel, you are. Uh, so, Delis, before we get started, uh, why don't you introduce yourself uh, and then we can crack on. Okay, so my name is uh, Delis Silla. Um, I am an author and a speaker. So I'm the author of the book, uh, Predator Prince, How to Find the Man of Your Dreams and Not Your Nightmares. Um, and I also coach. So I work as a life coach um, looking at emotional independence. So basically helping people to be able to make decisions about their life from a place of authority, confidence, rather than a place of bad experiences that will kind of determine, you know, the kind of life choices that they, they choose to make. Brilliant. And also you are uh, um, running an amazing charity as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I run a charity called Who Will Hear My Cry. So we raise awareness on rape, child abuse and domestic violence. And that's going through a revamp as well, actually. Um, I've had this whole thing going on over the last month of just changing my life and different elements of it. And the charity is one of them where we really do want to concentrate more on the relationship side um, of things, healthy relationships, which kind of culminates into some of the areas that we work in uh, now. So that's really what I have been up to and what I do. Brilliant. Fantastic. Uh, so, guys, do you 
have to make sure you connect with the list. Uh, in particular, if you are in the relationship field, uh, then uh, you will love to support her charity and also the work that she does. Now, today, uh, we are looking at uh, helping you out uh, to make more money from your events, from your mm -hmm. seminars. And in particular, you mentioned about attracting, uh, um, getting the right people to move on with you and to yeah. take the next step with you. Okay, yeah. So, can you give us a bit of background of what, give me a bit of context of what is uh, the seminar you are yeah. talking about? Because... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, your pitch and uh, your sales strategy will change depending from if you are, if it, this is your own event, if uh, you are speaking at someone else's event, oh, this is yeah. a webinar or a podcast, so the context uh, will determine the strategy that we are going to create. Yeah. So one of the things that I started doing from January is this workshop called Rewriting History, which I, I absolutely love. And basically this uh, workshop is to help people look back and process map things that they have done, whether it's to do with work, relationships, career, that hasn't served them. Yeah. So I kind of help people to identify the common patterns that keep making them end up in the same place. And sometimes it can be so vast and so deep as to why those things keep going on. It, it, it can be quite profound. So the yeah. first one that I did in January, I mean, I had people disclosing all sorts of things as to what had kind of stopped them from moving forward in different areas that, you know, in a way that they would like to. So from those workshops, what I would really like to do, and, you know, one of the things people have complained about is that they're too short. So it's like, a, it's from like one to five. And I guess there is a, there is some method to that madness. Um, for one, the price would be a lot more um, mm -hmm. if it was for a full day, but it touches on so many different areas that I think, working with people one-on-one -on -one after the workshop would be very helpful, I think, for both of us. So it's really getting people to be able to take that next step so that we can work together as, you know, client and coach. That's brilliant. Kind of so they're for. coming to your half a day. So they're yes. coming to you. And what's the price point of that? Um, it was £25, mm -hmm. which is really, and, and gosh, I even provide refreshments. Yeah. I mean, who does that? That's... Um, so, yeah, so we, it, it, it really is... Um, it's a, it's, a, it's a short, shortish day. Yeah. Um, there's quite a lot packed into it, but it's kind of, you know, I've started to kind of build a community around it as well. So I've been asked to have everyone that has been to the rewriting history workshop to join together. I had a rewriting history spa weekend break yeah. uh, in June, which was, you know, another really good event. Um, but just to bring people together, uh, oops, just to bring people together. Perfect. And, um, I get, I get, I get the model. So, uh, so the the feedback was, uh, how was the feedback about the content uh, of the event? Uh, they were all happy about giving it. They were all happy about that. There was uh... definitely, yeah. Okay. I perfect. had, I had great feedback. The main thing was it's too short. And I'm like, well. Okay, good. That's that's, that's a good thing. That's yeah. a very good thing because then uh, they are saying, I want more. So that's the, the great thing when you say it's yeah. too short, I would love to, this to be longer. Exactly. Means that, okay, great. So now you can pay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. So did you, uh, what was your process uh, to get them as a one-to-one -one client uh, during the event, during and after the event? Um, during the, it was not so much during the event, I kind of said it at, at the beginning, but you know, there would be an opportunity for us to work one on one. This is really to, you know, showcase just to touch on really to give like an overview for themselves to see what it is that they would need to be able to move things forward. So at the mm -hmm. end of it, I did say, you know, that there is a special price. I never really like to talk about the price itself at the end. I just said, if you want, if you're interested in one, one on one, then let's, let's talk and, you know, take it from there. And so, and then what happened when you say that? Um, I do have some inquiries. Um, again, I've kind of revamped a lot of a lot of things around the coaching, um, even price wise, and having different models that are more you know bespoke, as opposed to having a price for this and that. Yeah, I think really when I look at um, the kind of clients that I'm having and what they're presenting, I feel more comfortable in tailoring it to the individual so that i haven't had the opportunity to do because as i said i've only done this you know the whole stripping away thing over the last four weeks so this is what i would be introducing 
to my next one why I think this would be great to do okay. this now. Um, when you when you are mentioning uh, when you were. Uh, offering the option of that there was going to be an opportunity to work one to one together did they have to did they know the price did they know uh, the program roughly did they know uh, did they have like a, a sales form to fill up or an application form to fill up no they didn't all, the, right. all they had was the evaluation form for the actual um, for the actual workshop and how well, they found it that's brilliant. So there are a few things that already I can see that will increase your conversion. And uh, one is uh, to ask for the money. <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, the the first one because uh, they, they will never be as hot uh, as they are when they are in the room and they've just been uh, through the entire workshop. Now, sure. if you are um if you are uh the moment they leave the room is the moment where life happens. Sure. And then you have no more control over their attention. The great thing about workshop sure. is that all their attention and focus is on you. Therefore, they have only one buying decision, which is you. Correct. And that's why you can do two things. Uh, you can decide and test two things. One is to make a special offer on the yeah. day, which are mentioning... Yeah. Uh, this is the program because the, so this is the thing when you're doing a special offer on the day you cannot create something bespoke Correct. because uh, you need this is the program this is how it works this is the offer if you join today this is the discount and these are the bonuses that you will get sure so this model doesn't allow you to create something bespoke if you're going mm -hmm. down the bespoke model then the thing you can do is to have an application form Right. So still you have to mention a price range and you still have to mention what's going to be an average sure. steps. Mm -hmm. So we are going to work on this, this, this and that because you will find that even if it's bespoke, some people, they're always looking for the same things. Sure. So you are tapping into the things that you know people will want anyway. Yeah. And then you will say, depending on how much you need of this, then there will be different price range, starting from this one, going up to this one. Sure. Mm -hmm. So now they have an idea of what the price range is going to be. So that will qualify, will not, you will not get time wasters, basically. Sure. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, if, if you mention uh, the first one, the first price uh, and you create some contrast between uh, the range that you offer, then uh, you will see also that you have a much higher value as well. Sure. So yeah. that's why it's important when you're doing an application close uh, is to mention, uh, now, the package would range from, um, you know, 2000 yeah. to 10000 or 5000 whatever is going to be the new price range that you're going, that you're going to work on. But then you will say, and then based on the conversation that we will have once you apply, then we will decide what package is the best for you and what payment options are the best for you. Sure. So now in this way, I'm listening and I feel, well, there are payment options. Okay. That might feel a bit more affordable. And uh, I'm saying, I'm not uh, making a payment right now. I'm filling up an application form. Yeah. And... Uh, you will say that you have a gr you have a deal for people that will sign the application form right now, right? Because you want them not to say, "Oh, yeah, leave me the application form and I'll send it to you." Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Makes when sense. When someone's, uh, I often speak even at other events, and I got the application form, and they will say, "Oh, let me. I don't have time right now." I say, "Well, if you don't fill up the application form right now, I will not be able to give you the deal I'm giving the other people." Because mm. I don't want to chase. Uh, yeah, which is fair enough, and, and yeah, which I don't want to chase either. Exactly, and uh, I, I I'm happy to chase for payments, <laughs> but uh, yeah, exactly, but not for a new client. But not for an application form. That's mm -hmm. different, and also will be a sign of their commitment there and then. Mm -hmm. So this uh, is, in my opinion, uh, one of the ways that uh, you can immediately get the clients there and then. And uh, there are then two ways in, in which you can approach once you have the application form done. One is to have uh, the sales conversation there and then. 
Mm-hmm. So let's mm-hmm. say the workshop finishes at five. You give yourself a five to six or five to seven to then uh, have a, like a waiting list uh, and people will wait for their turn for their call or for, the, for their meeting with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you are the only one doing it, uh, I will not recommend that because, uh, you know, yeah. someone can wait two hours and also yeah. sometimes you you are going into such deep subjects that, uh, you know, a conversation sometimes like, people will open up, will cry, and then there are the other yeah, people sure. waiting in the back. Like, sure. It doesn't create that safe environment. So my recommendation is then to say that the calls needs to be done within 48 hours. Sure. Because you need still to give them a time limit. Otherwise, two months later, <laughs> they're still that's, there. Yeah. That's true. So, so that's about the process. How does it sound uh, to you so far uh, if you have to put this process in place? No, it sounds very good. Because I've already seen what happens when that process isn't in place. Especially with the, with the timeline. So, for example, I've had clients in the past where... On, on the contract and it's something that I'm doing with clients moving forward that there is going to be a cutoff point because if I've taken your money I don't want it to be with me forever and ever I'm in because you're not focused on your coaching so mm-hmm. I'm realizing or I've realized that having that um, time scale defined is crucial whether it's in the application process or whether even after you've signed to work with me then I would expect that your coaching should be done within a definite period of time Unless, of course, you're, I'm on some kind of retainer and you can contact me as and when you like. Because I don't feel good yeah. knowing that, you know, you've paid X amount of money and you haven't finished your coaching. It's not great for me. So, yeah, definitely I can see the value in what you're saying. Fantastic. And uh, I feel it's also very aligned with the way knowing you is very aligned with the way you work with uh, um, you work with people and the space mm. that you create for them. So yeah. I think that this uh, will yeah. be a better solution than a, a get it now close, which uh, most of the time is very masculine yeah. and uh, yeah. uh, which works, yeah. but uh, some people was for some people, not for others. So uh, for yeah. you, I think the application close will work incredibly well uh, as a mm. character because it becomes a conversation. Uh, yes. It's very conversational. Mm. It's less by now, by now, by now, by now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and my area of work is quite is quite emotional. Yeah. So I need to also be, you know, be sensitive to that. So yeah, you're absolutely right. So now there are a few things that uh, we still need to put in place. So this, uh, ima- remember that every time you do an event, before the event, you will have uh, um, printed your applications. So yes. when you're making the pitch, then uh, yourself uh, or someone else in the room, uh, if you have someone helping you out during the event, mm. uh, is better if you have someone else um, because uh, mm. it takes, uh, like the moment uh, you give away the form, uh, it takes you from, uh, perceptionally speaking, from speaker to assistant. Yeah. And uh, at the end Sorry. of the day, is a perception game here. Now, if there mm. are five people in the room, that's fine. You will not need an assistant and it doesn't create a lack of... A, a, a lower, actually, it would be weird if you have an assistant for five people giving the form. Um, but it, it can it can work. Um, if you have a room with 15, 20 people, 30 people, 50 people, then at this point, mm. it's better to have someone else because then so you can be focused yeah. on... Uh, you know, exactly. saying what the program is about, uh, how the application works, uh, what the process is, uh, instead of shuffling with papers and, oh, no, let me go back. Uh, just give me a second. I'll go back and take my paper. It, it all breaks yeah. uh, the, the, the conversation that you're having with them. Yeah. Um, and then there are a few things as well. Uh, do you, so you said that you mentioned uh, at the beginning that there is the oppor- uh, an, op- an option to work with you. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you say it? Um, I say it very much like I would go through what they're going to be experiencing throughout the day. And I said, it's going to obviously throw up a few things for people in the room. But don't, you know, be too surprised if you don't get all your answers now. I said, because you won't. It is only four hours for, you know, looking at stuff that has gone over, you know, an average of at least 25 years. So therefore, needing that extra time, I am available 
to do one-on-one -on -one coaching with you as a result of whatever shows up for you from this course. So I kind of just put it out there. That's so brilliant. That they are, just to manage the expectation that you are not going to get all the answers here. You know. That's perfect and it's very beautifully said. Uh, so from now on, add as well that at the end, uh, you will give out application forms for people to apply on the coaching one-to-one -one, uh, when they see the value that they receive from the workshop. Correct, yes, that would be good. Because then in the back of their mind, they it doesn't come as a surprise. Yes. You already mentioned there's going to be an application form for this. So when you give out the application form, it doesn't create any awkwardness. Yes. Particularly yeah. because you're running a small environment. Yeah. I think that's really helpful. Uh, perfect. And then now is time for, um, uh, for the close. Uh, what do you think are some of the, um, the things that uh, your, you know, your clients that you work with, they constantly need, they're constantly looking for? Um, I think it would be to understand why they, why they feel that they have failed at certain things. And a lot of them feel quite stagnant. Like they're repeating the same things over and over again, but then they're quite unaware as to why. But I also feel that they're very unaware of how much control they have over not repeating those same mistakes. So just helping them to kind of come out of themselves and hold a mirror up and say, okay, I did da 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 Okay, I understand this is the reason why I did it. So I need to deal with the reason. What a lot of the, I find that people are doing is looking at the action. How do they stop the action without going back and looking there is a reason as to why you respond in this way or there's a reason why, you know, you speak in this way and therefore let's look at the reason. Stop looking at the, at the words that are just coming out of your mouth or the act, physical actions that you're taking, you know, that you're being responsible for. Let's look behind that. And I think it's the looking behind that a lot of them um, have, have needed to kind of find mm -hmm. out. And what is that they want to have in, in terms of what is... Because um, uh, what you're describing right now is important because it's part of the process. Mm. But as human beings, we don't want the process, we want the results. And Absolutely. we justify the process to get the result that we want, yeah. <laughs> right? So what are the results uh, that they want? What is the opposite of the situation where they are in? I think control. What, what I think ultimately what they're looking for is control. I think they want to be in control of whatever situation it is that, that throws up for them, that, that, you know, those issues are throwing up for them. They want to be the ones to determine how their life it's, you know, plays out as opposed to life mm -hmm. playing them, if that makes sense. Perfect. So one is control. Brilliant. What else do they want? Fulfillment. Mm -hmm. I think they just want to be happier within themselves. Okay. And one more thing. Control, fulfillment and validation. I think a lot of them don't feel valued. They don't see their worth. A lot of them don't see their worth, I think would be probably one of the main things. They really do not see the importance of who they are. So I want you to write those three things down, uh, if you can uh, mm -hmm. find somewhere uh, to write. Uh, because uh, you are looking at, you said, control, fulfillment, mm -hmm. and uh, know, knowing their worth. Yeah. So when you're doing an application close uh, as well, but even when you're doing any other types of close, it's always mm -hmm. really important to focus on what this that they're going to get rather than the process. Right. Because uh, at the end of the day, as long as you're going to give me the results that you want and you're not uh, getting me to do something which is illegal or I'm not really exactly. comfortable, I'm, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to trust you that you know your stuff. Mm-hmm. So when you're making the application close, I want you to really emphasize uh, the fact that by working with you, now they've started the process. Right. And then uh, if they want uh, in their life to have sustainable, in a sustainable way, to feel in control, yeah. to be fulfilled, 
and also to understand and know their worth mm. so that uh, they can uh, apply for better opportunities, they can have a better career, they can have a better business. Yeah. So now you've got to bring it in a tangible way, yeah. Yeah. right? Because, uh, you know, control, fulfillment uh, is what we want emotionally. But yeah. now we have to take it a step further and justify it physically. Mm-hmm. So yes, right. when you are doing the application, you're going to say, now, by working with me one-to-one, uh, you will be able to be fully in control, to be fulfilled, and to fully understand your worth so that you can have a better relationship with yourself, so that you can apply for better job opportunities, have a better yeah. business. So these are the things that they want physically, so then now we will make... Uh, what is that they feel emotionally will make them feel real. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we are human beings and we are respond to material things. Yeah. And then you are going to segue into... Now, because of the programs that I create are bespoke, mm-hmm. and that's how I'm different from everyone else, so then you're going to create a comparison there. Saying a lot of other people will just give you an off-the-shelf program. That's not the way I work. Yeah. So now you're making a statement. That makes you even more attractive. Because it means, oh, wow, she knows her stuff. Yeah. Then the way I work, I don't believe in off-the-shelf programs. I'm going to work in a bespoke way. I'm going to create a path which is perfect for you. And this is why to work together... I need you to fill up an application form. Because I said, mm-hmm. this is the beginning of the journey. You, you need to complete this journey. If you want to feel in control, to feel fulfilled, and to, uh, to fully value your worth. And this is a process, and I want you to be with you in this process. Mm-hmm. So fill up the application form, and then we are going to discuss how we can work together. Now, packages that... I, different packages that uh, are run they range from this price to this price but then the reason why I'm also giving an application form so then we can discuss what is the best package for you and what is the best option for you and uh, as well what is uh, uh, the best payment option yeah mm-hmm. and then you will give them time to fill out the application form so this is important now everything here is recorded so then you can uh, uh, listen to the words I don't want you to use my words I -hmm. want you to understand the concept behind this no I get it completely and and then make it yours because at the end yeah you know what I'm just putting down like those little points but I get it completely it's already working in my head brilliant fantastic it's really it's really working because I'm thinking I've got my next event that I'm planning in September and this has come at the right time and it's something that I also will feel very comes when you're right you do know me and and it's the truth so it makes it easy to come out of my mouth you know me if it's not true I, yep. if it's not me it ain't happening <laughs> yeah but saying that it's bespoke and it's tailored i was already on that path that this block thing is not working i have people that present some very deep issues uh for me like there's a lady that um i'm going to be working with she can hardly leave the house because of depression however when she attended one of my workshops, she found a lot of value in it and somebody has you know, referred her to me and I hope to be working with her. That's very different from somebody say, coming to me and saying, look, I've just split up with my boyfriend and I'm feeling a little bit da 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 and I just need some confidence. They are two completely different things. Yeah. So the fact that you're looking for nine sessions each, I shouldn't be charging the same price because I know that I'm going to have to work very hard with this other person and I will be working very differently. I'm, I'm going to put it this way. I'm going to be pulling from different skill sets. So it's, it takes more out of me to work here than to work there. And I Absolutely. think that should be reflective. So I, I get you completely. Fantastic. So then when you're making the call to action to give them to fill up the, the application form, give them time, give them at least yeah. five, six minutes to fill it up. Don't make it too long. Maximum no. mm-hmm. uh, wh- one page front and back, uh, A4, or even one page A4. Yeah. Um, so then they can finish in uh, um, in um, in about five, ten minutes. 
uh, for mm -hmm. the filling up the application form. And um, as well, you don't want to do it uh, as a last thing because if you're using feedback forms, that's one of mm -hmm. the reasons why you don't see feedbacks from the GDEX trainings because the last thing that we do is the call to action. Right. So what happens if you do the feedback form and the application form at the same time, now they are confused. Sure. And I've seen this doing, I'm saying this because it's, sure. a, it's, a, it's a mistake that can happen. It's very easy for, I made this mistake. A lot of people I'm seeing they make because they're like, okay, it's the application form, it's the feedback form, fill them up. So now I'm not anymore in buying mode. I'm in giving you feedback about your event. So now my brain is thinking about what went well, what can improve. Yes, exactly. And now I'm thinking about what can improve and now I've got to buy from you. So you're actually taking the buyer away from the buying process. Very true. So if you have a, a, a break uh, in, the, in between, mm -hmm. then you can, that's a good moment to do the application form. Right. So then let's say that two hours in, you have a break. Then at that point, you can position, fill up the application because at the, at the, at the point, they already have two hours of value, so they will have understood. If you do it over the three hours mark, it's even better because they add more value. Mm. But don't leave it as the last thing if you're using the sure. feedback forms. Sure. Or otherwise, just completely drop the feedback forms and with the application and then send them a feedback form Lazy via email, email or uh, if that's important for you. Mm -hmm. so these are uh, the things that uh, I'm sure that if you do them with your personality your charisma the, the way you speak and the, the product that you have the, you're going to crush it with, uh, with this part <laughs> I hope so <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure you will I'm sure you will <laughs> yeah. because uh, what was missing uh, you were doing the right thing was just part of the process yeah. missing. Mm. because uh, you are one of these very lucky people that uh, you are very attractive which means that okay. uh, your people will see you and somehow they want to start to have a conversation with you. Mm. They will follow what you said and you know that. Mm. Uh, you know that. Uh, you are I a natural a leader. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, 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 one of the good ones. <laughs> but, but it's true. If you think about the work that you've been able to do with your charity uh, just in a few years, people follow what you say for a whole bunch of different reasons. And mm -hmm. uh, that's something that uh, is really difficult to develop. Or like, uh, you have it, uh, or if, <laughs> oh, you you don't, don't. <laughs> if you don't have it, you can train it really hard, but you're, you are in the lucky minority of people that uh, someone will see you, will trust you immediately, and then mm -hmm. will follow what you say. Mm -hmm. So then that's why I'm, just putting these processes in place, yeah. you are more focused on the sales process to happen. And yeah. that's it. Mm -hmm. Cool. I think we're done then. Brilliant. That's excellent. What I'm was really uh, the, the biggest value for you in this conversation? I think the closing process. Because I've done everything up to that point, which is the most important bit, the closing process. How do I couch it in a way that is done with integrity, is sincere, and actually takes me to the next step. So that's great for me. Brilliant. Definitely. It's been a, it's been a great call. And uh, Thank you. I will talk to you soon. Thank you very much. <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> ladies you. and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, listening or watching. And uh, make sure you subscribe to the show if you haven't subscribed yet. And uh, if you want me to help you with your pitch and selling from the stage, just click the application form below and uh, you will jump on a call with our team and we'll see how we can help you turn your event into cash. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Bye.